So there's a little gear right there. Let's pull this guy off. Well, that's definitely broken. That's the cause of it. All right, let's compare it to the other gear, to the new one. Hey, what's up guys? So, today we're gonna go over a 2011 Jeep Grand Cherokee driver's side blend door actuator gear replacement. So, just wanted to give you guys like a overview of what it takes to get to that particular little gear and uh, how much work yeah you would need to put in some people manage to do it without taking this stuff apart but my hands are kind of bigger so can't really fit in there so gonna have to go the long way okay let's turn the camera around just to check it out so again this is a 2011 Jeep Grand Cherokee uh, so the driver's side just continuously blows hot air you can you know definitely change the cold to hot or hot to cold on the passenger side but the driver's side remains the same sometimes it just uh, the motor tries to uh, adjust it or open up the blend door close it up and it just keeps clicking but nothing happens so let's take a look inside here so that right there is the motor door, actuator motor, whatever. That's what we need to take off. And in general, this is what we're we had taken off now. So to take this piece off, you would need to take off about four bolts. They're right here, right here, here, and here, and then uh, two on top on each side of the column. Once you pull this up, carefully if you pry it on it, see these tabs right here, they just pop up. So there is one bolt. There is one bolt in here. And then one on the other side. Right there. Uh, right there. Anyways, then you will remove the side cover here. Just pops off to the side. And this piece will just come down, the, the kick panel will just come down that way. Then you will say, you know, pull, pull your finger kind of in there behind it and just pull on it on each side. It takes quite a bit of force to pull it off. Just do it, you know, within a reasonable amount. If it feels like it's breaking, then, you know, we'll take a look and adjust the panel to where it will have the best angle for it to come out. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I just remove this metal brace right here. Those four bolts here, they were a uh, nine millimeter bolts. So then I'm going to go in and remove this little buffer right here or bracket so that I have uh, easier access to the motor itself from here this way. All right. So now at this point, what I had to do is actually remove part of the ducting and then move the other piece of ducting aside. If it's, you can see, it kind of goes down this way, so I just moved it out that way. And then I was able to access the two T20 screws on each side. So one right here, and then one on top right here in there. Shine some light on there. Okay, there you go. So there's one of them, there's a second one. Now we can pull it off. There we go. So there's the motor. So there's a little gear right there guy off. Well, that's definitely broken. That's the cause of it. Alright, let's compare it to the other gear, to the new one. Okay, so here's the new piece. Bought it from a dealer. Here's the part number. Uh, without a discount, 
it was roughly 22 something dollars with the discount with 30 percent discount for the shop uh it was like it ended up being roughly about 15 bucks for this little piece anyways they are a little bit different so that threw me off at first but uh they are made to fit so that way you don't mess up the alignment on the gear so after further inspection i realized that this gear right here on the motor or a servo it misses one of the little uh, spleens just like it is on the new gear so i guess there isn't really any way to put it in wrong regardless okay next let's uh redo this process backwards and assemble everything back up just a few tips uh, if you don't want to burn your hands these pipes right here these are the coolant pipes that go into the radiator right here the basically the fan will blow through it and then provide you heat inside the cab so if your car has been driven you know and got warmed up to temp these things will be hot like a so yeah, watch out for that. It will hurt. Ask me how I know. Ouch. Anyways, so, and that's the gist of this whole situation here. All right, let's uh, put it back together and then uh, hopefully everything's gonna be okay. <laughs> no, it, everything's gonna be fine actually. So I ran into a small issue with this little servo where that little uh, this slit right here was pointing the other way and uh, so I had to turn it back around kind of towards where it's supposed to be pointing to on, in my case it has to be pointing towards the, the uh, plug right here because if you look here and you want some slit here in there you see it points that way towards the back of the car and this is where the plug has to be going so gears themselves are aligned and it should be good so yeah uh, at that point the motor will have enough so the gears themselves will have enough slack to go back and forth in order for the motor to fit into the proper slit since we're going to be doing a uh, what is the proper word for it? Calibration anyways, afterwards. So what I did is just pop a couple of tabs open carefully with a, you know, just a flat head screwdriver, small one. And then just carefully popped it open, lifted it off, turned the gear over, and now I'm just gonna assemble it back up and put it back in. So nothing to it. Anyways, so that's the things that some, some people don't really tell you since, you know, uh, since technically I, I installed it and it's going to be uh, going in just like a fresh unit would be or a fresh motor would be and you have to calibrate it regardless. So, I mean, it wouldn't make a difference to it if I turn it that way or that way. All right, well, looks like the camera kind of sees it. All right, I think we should be okay. So, that's why we need to put that stuff in. As you can see, we've got this thing assembled back up. It's pointing the right way. Let's see if we can see the camera. So it's going to begin getting installed that way.
this is why it's so crucial to remove that little duct to the side. Some people manage to do it without, but uh, it's only gonna take me another, you know, 10 minutes of assembling everything back up, so whatever. I'm just gonna take it apart so it's easy to work and I don't have to cuss at it. Okay, I'll get back to you guys once uh, all the screws are tightened down and then we'll kind of go from there. Anyways, okay, now let's connect this clip back in. See what I mean? Ease of access once you remove this little metal panel. Okay. Uh, kinda hard to see past the camera. There we go. Well, then there's that little security clip that you have to put back in. Bam. That's back. All right, well, at this point, I think what I'm gonna do is uh, going to connect the headlight module back to it, and then uh, the, the gas cap or the gas tank lid uh, button to it, and then uh, see if I can turn back, turn the car back on, and um, do the calibration, and go from there. So, in order to calibrate it, we would have to take the battery or disconnect the battery. Um, probably I'll just do the negative post on this car. And the funny thing is about this car is that the battery is under the passenger front seat. Right there. So, we're just going to disconnect the negative post, let it hang. Then we'll go over to the fuse box, find the climate control fuse, pull that one to eliminate any kind of residual, residual charge in the system. And then... Uh, Give it a couple of minutes, connect everything back up, and uh, let it do its thing. We'll set uh, everything to kind of center and probably auto if there is a setting like that, and then just kind of go from there. Okay, all right, let's do this. Here are the tools that I used today to do this job. So Makita, that's just optional. Uh, longer extension, shorter, shorter extension. Uh, what is this a uh, quarter inch drive 8 mil 7 mil and then a quarter inch ratchet with a t20 bit I did not cut it shorter but you could It'd be probably a little bit easier some tape I just wrapped it around this so I could stick it in there and then it would hold it in place flat head screwdriver uh, probably a flat um, neoprene or plastic pry bar would work pretty well for some of these panels flashlight and 10 mil for the battery that's about it okay so let's go hook the battery back up and kind of go from there if she sings us a fat tune okay so can I connect it back up let's turn it on you're clicking so I've set everything to kind of zeroed out see what happens okay sometimes there's some people say that you have to do this you know the whole disconnecting the battery part and stuff turn it back on like two three times till it gets it right because sometimes it could be just not quite right all right so Let's go to cold, turn the fan on, Great success, we got cold air coming out of this one. So I believe this one has to be turned to cold as well. Wonderful, got cold here, got cold here. Now let's switch this side to hot. I hear it moving 
and it went too hot. So there you have it folks. Um, that's what it took. Okay, so first things first, I've assembled the upper part of that. Attached the lower one. And now I'm going to put the brackets back in, put the brace back on, and then put the panel back on, attach the two screws on top, and then the floor on the bottom here. So here's an interesting bit of information. So the hood latch, or the opener, whatever, it just clips into this plate piece right here. Put it in like so. It. It's pretty easy, pretty simple. Just click it back in. Yeah, same thing here. Just going to assemble it back up. Put that back in place. Just to move the red tab back in. And boom, that's on. And now we just have four screws on the bottom on each side of the steering cone behind this little plastic shroud right there there's the opening And that's that folks, so assembled. <clears throat> All right, so again, to recap, um, you'll need a T20 torque bit. Um, I use a quarter uh, inch ratchet with a little turning ratchet deal inside of it. Uh, got that from uh, Home Depot, you can get it from Amazon. I'll probably find the link and post it up there too. Um, so you can just, you know, hit, look, at, look at the description and then you'll see the list of tools that I use if you need to buy one of them or not. You know, use that. It definitely supports me. You know, it gives me some extra cash uh, for spending monies for the Jeep project. Uh, anyways, thanks for watching. If you guys got questions, whatever, just you know, shoot, and I'll answer the best way I can, and we'll go from there. Um, so, if you like the video, subscribe, share it, and then until next time, peace.